DPI is one of the most misunderstood subjects on the internet. And that's saying something. Not a day goes by that I don't see some statement about file resolution and DPI that just makes no sense. In this video, I'm gonna tell you once and for all what you need to know about DPI in five minutes. So DPI means dots per inch, which I think everyone knows, but what do we mean by an inch? Well, let's consider the case of a t-shirt. Let's say this print provider can support 300 dots per inch for the graphic you wanna print on a t-shirt. What that means is that if you look at one inch on the t-shirt, your print provider can print 300 dots in a line. And of course, it doesn't just have to be a horizontal line, you can also print up and down too. So if you wanted to print a square inch at 300 DPI, you would have 300 dots horizontally and then 300 dots vertically. So if we had to print a graphic that was 10 inches by 12 inches, that would be 3,000 dots by 3,600 dots at 300 DPI. DPI will vary depending on the object we're printing on. Typically things that are kind of within arm's length of us, like books and t-shirts and magazine covers, are going to be in the 300 DPI range. Things that might be further away, like tapestries or rugs, you can get away with 150 DPI. And something that's really big, like a billboard, might even be as low as 12 DPI. It's really important that whatever surface you're going to be printing to, you understand the DPI resolution and requirements. Now that still may confuse you because we haven't talked about digital images yet, so let's go over to that subject. For this video, I'm gonna be talking mostly about JPEG and PNGs. These files have a width and a height in pixels, and that's it. There's no DPI, there's no PPI. I wasn't even gonna mention that, but I did. All they have is these little square units of color called pixels. So if we zoom in super close, you'll see all these little squares here. I know you've seen all these drop-down menus that have DPI and all these other kind of settings. I'll get to that, but for the moment, just realize it doesn't really exist. All we care about right now is width and height in pixels. Okay, so let's go back to our t-shirt example. So imagine again, we can print 10 inches across by 12 inches down at 300 DPI. So what this means is that we can print 3000 dots across and 3600 dots up and down. So if we had an image we wanted to print onto this at 300 DPI, the absolute best perfect scenario is if our image is exactly 3000 pixels wide by 3600 pixels tall, because then every pixel will map exactly onto a dot on our t-shirt. So you can think of this as being like a one-to-one -one match between our pixels and the dots. Now let's consider a case where our source image is too small. Let's say it's half the size, 1500 pixels by 1800 pixels. So now we have a problem, which is that your image doesn't fill the space. So what happens is your print provider will artificially increase the size to be bigger. Since our image was only half the size and we're doubling it, it's gonna say something like 150 DPI. Now in reality, it's probably still printing 300 dots per inch, but every two dots are gonna be from one pixel, so it's gonna look very blocky. And whether or not 150 DPI is good for your scenario, it really depends again on the product you're printing on. Okay, so let's have a quick quiz. We have an image here, it's 4,800 pixels by 6,000 pixels. What is the DPI? I'm sorry, that was a trick question. The answer is, of course, there is no DPI. What we can say is that if you wanna print this image at 300 DPI, you can do so at 16 inches by 20 inches. So a question I see all the time online is someone has an image that's like 1200 pixels by 1500 pixels and they say, how can I make it 300 DPI? The answer is, it's already 300 DPI if you print at four inches by five inches. That's how you can get 300 DPI, but of course they want a bigger image and it's just not possible to do with an image that's that small originally. So as a quick side note, I know there are AI tools these days that can upscale things. You can actually increase the resolution a little bit, but that's beyond the scope of this video for now. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video in the future about that subject. So why are people so confused? Well, a lot of it comes down to the way we create documents in these programs like Photoshop and Affinity Designer and Adobe Illustrator. Now, it's not their fault exactly. They're trying to make life simple, but a lot of times these terminologies get mixed up. For example, let's look at Affinity Designer here. If I create a new document, I can select my document to be pixels, yet they still allow me to select DPI, even though DPI doesn't really mean anything in this scenario. Pixels are pixels. And in fact, in all these programs, when you're creating an image that's going to be you know, JPEG or PNG, this whole interface is just a glorified calculator that's trying to figure out how many pixels you need. Even when you select inches or feet or yards or millimeters, it's all just a little wrapper to make it easier to calculate. So I hope this subject is a little more clear to you now. Really, you just have to think about what is your resolution divided by the DPI, and that tells you how many inches you can possibly print out to achieve that DPI.